Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and today we're gonna look at what I believe is the most unique gimbal on the market today, the Benro GH2F, right after this. I've been doing a series of gimbal head reviews for wildlife photography specifically over the last year, and I was really excited to get my hands on this, this one. This is one I've wanted to get a look at for a while um, because it's really unique. Now I've got it on the tripod now. Uh, I'll put a link at the bottom to the tripod that it's on here, this uh, Robus tripod that I really, really like. Um, and just a mention as I'm taking this off, uh, this was not given to me and I'm not affiliated with Benro in any way. Uh, this was given to me by B&H on loan. So thank you B&H. I get a chance to get my hands on these, test them out a little bit and then uh, send them back to them. And here's my thoughts on this. Uh, it's it's really an interesting design. I'm going to show you the uh, the collapsibility. It's the only gimbal that I'm aware of, and again, I, there could be another one out there that's designed to fold down. So you could see this here in the folded position, and to get it into the first position was pretty easy. It, it slides up, locks in, and then it's got some some really nice robust knobs here to tighten down, and then also on the clamp on the side. I also want to. While I have it off, I want to show you this is an ARCA compatible uh, swivel. So it gives you this unique, and I really like this, it gives you a unique option of using this ARCA plate in a side mount position. And very few gimbals allow you to do both. There are some gimbals that are designed in the side mount position, and some gim most gimbals have the cradle arm that's attached here. There are a couple vendors that actually put an ARCA plate here and then they give you a compatible cradle that will slide in there. So you can use it with the cradle arm or without. And by the way, I really like that option. Again, there are very few that do that. I'll, I'll mention one other uh, in, later in this video. So the construction overall, I, I am worried the more components I see, the more moving parts there are, I always think more opportunity for failure. This seems very well built and very solid when it's assembled. So I, wasn't, I had no concerns about this unit being sturdy uh, once it's put together. So uh, as I'm sliding this on, I'll talk about a couple of the other features of this. Uh, I'll mention the specs here. So you're looking at two and a half pounds on the lighter side. Uh, the average gimbal is about three pounds for reference. There are some, obviously some heavier and some a little bit lighter. Two and a half pounds puts this on the light side of that, um, of that range. It is a load capacity of just 22 pounds. Now that is on the lighter side. A lot of these have a load capacities of 40, 50, 60, 100 pounds. So on the light side of the range for load capacity. And it's really designed as a travel gimbal. And I'll tell you whether, I'm, or whether I think it achieves that or not um, later in the video, but let me just get on to the rest of this uh, component, which is now the cradle arm. And this one's a little interesting. Uh, I won't be able to give you a super close up, but it's got a little button here. Let's see if we can get it to focus. And then it, interestingly, it pushes to the side, swivels to 90 degrees, and it's got these pretty good lockouts. So again, the more moving parts, the more concerned I am, is there friction or play or how's the tolerances? This one's pretty good. So in this position, there's no, almost no movement, which is, which is important. You wouldn't want movement in this range. Is this necessary? You know, could they have just designed it without folding? Probably because I don't think it's a huge space saver to go from there to there, but it is nice. So if you're gonna make a travel gimbal and you're gonna go all out, why not do it all out? Uh, and then as mentioned, this is an ARCA compatible plate that will then lock this in. And in this position, I felt pretty good. Like I, I really did feel like everything was pretty solid. It felt like it was one solid unit. So well machined, well thought out, well designed, and works pretty well. Now I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna put my camera on here. I'm gonna talk about how smooth it is. I'm gonna show you some of the, some of the potential downfalls of a gimbal this size. Um, I didn't mention the height. This is seven and a half inches tall. Most gimbals are between nine and 10. So on the, on the shorter side for sure. Uh, but again, it's all part of that travel nature of what this is designed to be. So let me grab my lens. I'm gonna throw it on here. I'll be right back. So now I've got the, uh, the big setup here, the Z9 and the 402.8. I can't remember the weight on this. I wanna say it's 13 pounds, 14 pounds. It's in that range anyway. Um, and it felt pretty secure. Now, 
my initial impressions as I was kind of playing with this and feeling it was that it was going to be tight. Uh, it feels like there's a lot of resistance in here without a lot of fine control. I'm going to show you where that's, where that's good and bad, but it didn't, it, it, horizontally, it felt extremely smooth. I, I, I'm going to spin this around if I don't hit myself in the face here. And you'll see that it looks pretty smooth. And um, it's, it's got a little resistance there. In, the, in this vertical tilt, there's a little bit more resistance. I wouldn't call it sticky. I, I, sticky is bad when it comes to, to these movements. So I wouldn't call it sticky, but there's a lot of friction there. One thing I am noticing as I've played with all of these gimbals, while I, I was under the impression that when I got a, a gimbal with a little bit more resistance, I wouldn't like it. I actually don't mind it. It doesn't have, I had no problem tracking birds in flight, songbirds moving quickly. I had no problems with that. Even with gimbals, it felt a little, like they, a little more resistance in there. Um, some of the really, really smooth ones made by ProMedia, I thought were the smoothest. Uh, I'll show you an image here where I could spin it around in circles and it would just, it would just almost spin forever. Uh, these will not do that. This one will not do that. But uh, the horizontal panning was extremely smooth. The vertical was a little bit uh, tighter. Now I want to show you just the inherent concern that I have in these low profile gimbals. So I'm going to show you, let me move it here. Okay. Very low clearance here. So I can move it up, which I will in a second, but I've bottomed it out as low as I can. And I did that because with a gimbal, you want to try to get the center of gravity here to the center of gravity of the lens. And you can see it's just a little off. And this is the, as low as I can get this lens. Now, if my foot were shorter, uh, I, I probably would be able to get this balanced onto the center of gravity. The problem I have here is when I attempt to get it as low as possible to get the center of gravity right, if you could see the front right here, and I don't want to scratch this, it hits. Okay, so the front, that plate right there, that's hitting. And then in the back, I'll spin it around this way so you could see. When I go this way, it's touching right there. So the, the solution for me with my particular lens would be to adjust this, which you can just like with most gimbals and you could slide this up and that's going to give me the clearance that I need now. So I can go all the way up and all the way down as far as I can. Not, not a complete range of motion, but, but not the worst I've ever seen with this. Um, and when it's, when it's balanced, you see, it's going to be a little, it's close. It's a little unbalanced right now, but when it's balanced, it does a pretty good job. However, keep in mind that my center of gravity, and I showed you this is a little bit above the top. So now my center of gravity is up here, the fulcrum's here. So when it gets off center, it's going to want to slide a little bit. And you might see it here, but notice it's really not, and that's because it's moving a little bit now, but that's because the resistance here is keeping it in place. Unfortunately, I can't loosen it up anymore. I've got all the resistance off. So while that resistance is good to hold it in place, because it's really the resistance holding it in place, not that it's perfectly balanced, that resistance is good and holding it in place, but what it's not great at is creating a super smooth fluid motion. I will say, if I was scoring this like A, B, C, D, I would put this horizontal panning at like an A. I would put the vertical at maybe a B minus, C plus B minus. It's, it's certainly not bad. It's just not, it's just not incredibly smooth. Also, not a ton of ability to lock this out quickly or to get fine control. So you could see these little knobs, I had to turn quite a bit to lock them out. And when they're locked out, they did okay. One thing I will say is they didn't creep. So if you, if I hold this, I want you to watch and see if my lens here moves when I lock this out. Let me lock the horizontal panning first. And let's see if this creeps. And you will actually on some lenses be able to see it move. So I've locked it out and you can see this lens didn't move up or down. And that's good. So it didn't creep a lot when I locked it out. Not a lot of fine control in either the horizontal. So down here, it kind of is unlocked. And then I turn it and I lock it. But in between, there's not a lot of, of play there. So it's kind of locked or unlocked. Small knobs, which I don't love. But again, it's a travel gimbal. And so you would expect it to have smaller features in general. So do I like it? Well, I, I think the profile is a little too short. Um, for, for my setup, it could be good in some ways if you, if you have a smaller lens foot and can balance it. Smooth enough. Um, quality of the build is pretty good. I, I, no problems there. 
design very, very interesting, well thought out. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I don't know if I love it. Now this is a $550 gimbal. So in the, in the range of price points, you're getting a little bit expensive. 550 is starting to get expensive. For this price point, you can get around the price point, you can get a Katana Junior, which is an extremely uh, well-made, I think probably better functionally than this one. Um, but you can get into that price point. You can get a Wimberley for this price point. Um, so you're getting into an expensive gimbal. One thing I considered with this that I do really, really like, it's it's in addition to just being extremely compact and easy to travel with, one thing I did like is the ability, and I'll take this off quickly while I'm talking, but the ability to take this from a cradle into a side mount. Now, the advantage of side mount, there's an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is it balances the lens perfectly every time. Here's what I mean by that. If you take this and put the lens foot in here, the lens foot is balanced to the center of gravity. So if I put that on and the lens is going to be on the fulcrum now, so the center of gravity has to be in the middle of this lens. So now all I have to do is balance it forward and backwards and I will have a perfectly balanced system that will hold in any position with or without a lot of resistance. So if I was Benro, and I'm not, and they don't pay me to be a consultant, I would make an option to ditch this. I would sell this as an accessory. I would bring the price point down from 550 to about 400, 450, somewhere in that range. I would knock about 100, 150 bucks off, get rid of the cradle. I would sell this now as the world's lightest gimbal. Uh, this without the accessory, this accessory, this cradle, I wanna say it's about a half a pound. That would bring this to about two pounds. It might be a fraction less. I'll put the numbers down there because I'll weigh it. I actually weighed it. I just can't remember the exact um, number of ounces. But you would have probably the lightest gimbal, one that folds, one that is absolutely functional in the side mount position. I don't feel any real difference in a side mount to the cradle. And that's what I would do. Now, Benro, you can listen to me. I'm not gonna charge a consulting fee, but I really like this setup but I don't know that I'm gonna pay $550 for it. An alternative to this is the Photo Pro. And I'll put a, a picture of each of these up on the screen. I did a review of this. I'll put a link to that video now. It has chapters in it. You can go right to the Photo Pro and see the model that I'm talking about and the price point that it is currently at. Uh, that, that Photo Pro, I think it's the E6, it took a price drop. Um, so it is actually more competitively priced now than the Benro. Weighs about the same, doesn't fold, but it's a small profile. And it also has some advantages for people that are doing landscape photography. It's uh, got a bit of resistance in that Photo Pro. It feels like a fluid head to me, uh, but I really, really like that as well. So these would be, if I was, if you said, Scott, you can, I'm gonna give you a travel gimbal, you pick it. I would be torn between the two. If I wasn't paying the price, eh, this, might, this might be appealing to me. Uh, but I really do like that Photo Pro as well. So really, really close in terms of which one I would pick. It might come down to price point. Uh, if the Photo Pro was a little bit cheaper or on sale, maybe I'd go there. If this Benro had a price cut or a price drop or was on sale, maybe I would go with that one. But this option, if they sold this option to me, from a value standpoint, I think this is really, really um, appealing. Unfortunately, it's not an option. So uh, right now you've got to buy the kit altogether at $550. Just a quick note on the reviews. Not a lot of reviews on B&H on this. Three and a half stars, so not glowing praise. The critical comments seem to be around the tight tolerances. Some people, it seemed like they struggled with just setting it up. I didn't really have a problem with that. So if you have a problem with dexterity or your hands aren't great, you know, maybe that's something to consider. Uh, the other critical feedback was in that the tension was just too tight. And where I told you the horizontal panning on this, I found to be actually pretty smooth. I did, I did see some of that in the vertical panning. So I could see why some people might be a little bit critical of that. Not a huge deal to me. I, did, I personally do not find when there's a little bit more resistance, I don't really think it takes away from my tracking ability, but I could understand it. So not as smooth, again, as some of the other companies I've mentioned. And there is another travel option out there. So while I think this is an exceptional travel option, if you're looking for a, a lightweight, 
portable lens. Take a look at the other ones that I had mentioned in this video as well. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Have you used this? Do you have any more questions for me? I'd be happy to answer them. Going to do another couple of these gimbal reviews, uh, probably just single product at a time as they roll out and make new products. But I was glad I got my hands on this one. I satisfied some of my own curiosity. And uh, again, I like it. Can't say I love it, but I would say I like it. Maybe I like it a lot. All right. Well, thanks for your support of the channel. Thanks for tuning into this one. As always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.